took his hands on the same video they caught his balls from behind and was pulling them. And that's what you heard the screams coming from. That's what they did. Don't take my word for it. Watch the video. Now, I'm going to... Th thanks, thank you for that question. Any more questions? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, anybody have any more questions for me? How can you afford to do it? <laughs> I can't. I cannot afford to do it. Uh, just like I say tomorrow, I mean Saturday. Yeah, tomorrow. I got, I'm going to get up in the morning. I don't have the money now, but I know I'm going. One way or another, I'm going to be in weight loss. Why? Because this young lady who's from America, Georgia, her daughter is going through a racial issue over there. And so I just do it. And if nobody gives me any money, support for me to go, I'm going anyway. I know I'm going. I borrowed money. When I get paid on my first money, I ain't worked in six years. But that's what I do. I don't understand, <coughs> I don't understand sometimes how I make it. But guess what? I have not had an obligation yet where I couldn't go to. You know, because I didn't have gas. Something all, and guess who wants to help me? White people? I'm embarrassed to say that. Black folk? I'm embarrassed to say that. But in St. John 8.32, guess what it says? And ye shall know the truth, and that the truth shall set and make you free. And I'm going to close on this note. As far as your, your friends. Harriet Tubman and Underground Railroad, blacks talk about it. But blacks don't talk about all those white folks who own the land, who help build the tunnels for us to go through, my ancestors get through. We need to give the white people a round of applause. Sure, they gave us hell, but some of them also gave us money. <laughs> now, I don't have no problems clapping for white folks. And y'all see, I'm, I'm not putting black folk down. But all I'm saying, let's do better by our own people and stop looking for other folks to do for us that which we are unwilling to do for ourselves. Yes. I was just going to ask what the issue was in White Cross. I'm from White Cross. Mm -hmm. I'm from White Cross. I was just going to ask what the issue was in White Cross. Yeah, that's what it was right there. Now, I'm over there with the phone last you know, they shot, you know, they shot that guy over there, right? Mm -hmm. Eight times. Now, well, I, I don't want to answer that. I got that on YouTube as well. See, I go, I've been, look, poor St. Joe, they built people's <coughs> houses on toxic waste dumps over there. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, Bentonville, Arkansas, Quitman, Brooks County, over there in Brooks County, I reported. Nobody will report this. This black lady over there had sewage, raw sewage coming up through her kitchen sink. And when I went to city council, brought this folks to the council, do you not know that the local Quitman Free Press, Valdos, the Daily Times, they didn't report that. I, I reported, but they didn't. And this is why you all are so important. Tell the truth. Man, don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? If the volume of sacred law says that God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, use it. That's what I do. Next question, anybody else? Okay, no other question? If you, if you forget one, do something. All of this I've shown to if I lost the later times at public meetings. But what is most important is not this side of the news article. What's most important is the back side. And most black civil rights leaders, they'll say we are hating on white people. This lady right here, I don't know of anything that touched me more than this lady right here. And I reported on it. You'll find this on my blog. In fact, you will find her story because she wrote it out. Let me tell you a story about how what time we got? Three minutes? What time? Okay. Let me close out by closing on this white lady here. I won't give her name. And I covered this out by I wouldn't show her face. That was not important. What's as important is I never met her mother before. I hadn't met her either. And her mother called me and told me, she said, Brian, so did NAACP bail my daughter out of jail? She was in jail. Thirty-five hundred dollar bond. She said, "I don't know where she is." I said, "Ma'am, start calling the hospital." Because I've been working on that jail like that for a long time. She found out she was in ICU in South Carolina Medical Center. She'd been out there for three or five days. She said, "Ryan, will you go with me to the hospital?" When I went to the hospital, saw her teeth knocked out in the front. She was in the jail, and this was, this was when the guard was on her leg. And see, I don't understand the Jesus of a lot of people. I don't understand the Muhammad of a lot of Muslims. 
I don't understand the son of Amram and Yosef and Moses on the Judaism. Or who? How you can see all this going on and don't touch your <coughs> It don't touch your love for humanity. It touches me severely. It has nothing to do with black and white. So it came out that this lady, when she left the hospital, guess what they did to her? She don't pay five hundred dollars to be a Guess what happened to her? They released her to go home. Do you know she didn't have to pay that thirty five hundred dollars? They just let her go home. She went home. And eventually she left this area because she did not think that she could survive in this place. This is not a third of what I would tell you if I could tell you that. So I want to thank you very much for asking me to come to Valdosta State University to share with you. It may have been fragmented, but the reason it's fragmented is because I'm pregnant. And I'm a male. I got to be in pain to be pregnant and a man because I can't deliver the baby. This baby is stuck inside of me. It can't come out. So I'm in pain. And this is why I think that this, what's your name again, brother? Craig? Craig. Craig. You, I know why I think God touched him to help me here today. Because somebody can feel the pain of this baby inside of me that I can't give birth to because it's going to stay in here until I die. And that is the trouble of troubles of humanity. It's the insincerity to man and mankind when you fail to help other human beings and you don't try to pay to build a better world by telling the truth because regardless of how much money you have, regardless of how many men or women you sleep with, guess what the bottom line going to be? It's all about love. It's all about what have you done to bring and create a better world after you leave here. And so I'm pregnant with the possibility to be able to try to do my little small part to educate someone else. So our children won't catch the same hell that we are catching. Have anybody heard of chemtrails as I come? Anybody know what chemtrails are? Well, if you don't know what they are, any day now, for the next three days, just go outside and look up at the sky. And you see those planes spraying that white stuff out, those planes. They do it every day. Every other day at least. I watch them, I record them, I got them on YouTube. Google chemtrails and see if you can find out what's in those things. And we, the American people, sitting down here, we don't even ask what are they doing to us. I'm asking a question, have they messed up the environment so much until nature won't produce clouds for us? This is why you all are so important. You need to write. Tell your story. Don't be afraid. If you go to a newspaper, you're going to have to do what they say. But you won't always be there. So maybe one day you'll be free like me. And people ask me, Rhymes, maybe all. Uh, you need to go to CNN. Maybe I'll go to hire you. I can't work for those papers. I can't work for them. You know what? Anybody know why I can't work for them? Somebody raise their hand. Why can't I work for those papers? They're going to tell you what to write. They're going to tell me what to write. And the stuff I'm exposing now, I can't do that. They won't let me. I think that'll wind it up. Again, I want to thank you all. I didn't get as much participation as I wanted from you all. I wanted you all to ask me a whole bunch of questions. Any time left one? Yeah. Three? Yeah. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. I'm going to, uh, this last thing, I'm going to ask Dr. Ross to come up just a minute. <laughs> this is my right hand man. I don't ever go nowhere without Doc. And Doc had a 12 year litigation down in Florida against a citrus, citrus company. And the last minute, I would be remiss if I didn't let him say a few words. That's just the flavor of my nature and the nature of my flavor. Go ahead, my brother. Yeah. First of all, I'm a cancer survivor. I, I took uh, 42 treatment for chemotherapy, 42 treatment for radiation, for lost all the teeth and everything about that. And I have a malignant terminal illness. Malignant is terminal. Means that I'm going to be out of here, terminated. Okay? Uh, one of the main things with this, you heard what he was telling you here today, be positive, think positive. Don't, don't think anything about negative violence. You got a world out there, and you got to look at the economic side of it, as well as you look at everything he was telling you today. When you go out here as a journalist, like he, that like he's been hated on, you're going to be hated on, but you got to bring your story, like what he showed you here today. Some of the things that you've seen today, you got to go out, out there. It's out there. The story is out there. That's to be told. And I do believe that 
you have you is the future of tomorrow. And as you said, modern technology has changed this world. If I had the same illness 10 years ago, I'd have died. Because of the modern technology, I'm still here. Now, I was given five years to live. I'm going to the sixth year now. Out of, out of a five-year survey, 100,000 people surveyed, they've only been known to be five survivors. And, I, and I'm, I'm one of those lucky people, okay? And they, they're putting on a, a deal here at university right now for, for the council to support that. And try your best to absorb what you heard here today. I, I can't have a better friend. He's very loyal to and, and dedicated to his work. You got to be dedicated. I did go through a 12 year litigation. We lost everything we had as a family. We lost our dignity and our pride, but we survived it. That cancer is a cancer of racism for what I had to fight. And, and, and if I was to tell you today that the journalists that reported did a good job, and you guys is our livelihood, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to say now. Dedicate yourself to your work and be diligent about it. And, and just, just, just put everything you got into it because it, it, it's got a value that's invaluable. And as I close, I want to say I wish somebody would call the Valve Office <laughs> many times, Equipment Free Press, and ask them a question. Why have you failed to report about James Brown III, the first elected black mayor in Whitman, Georgia. And not only that, the first real mayor of Whitman, the, black, the first black African-American, make it more historic. And Val Doster Daily Times too often, along with TV stations, often forget to tell the truth. And my slogan has been for the last 20 years in this community. Why do you want to keep us deaf, dumb, and blind to the times, and unable to make intelligent decision based on facts? In 2004, listen to this because you're going to see it throughout my YouTube channel. In 2004, Valdosta City Hall had a plaque on the second floor that God allowed me to see, and I be started writing and addressing the people to get it taken down. Here's what that charter said. I'm a retired veteran of 21 years in the United States Armed Forces. Here's what that charter said. That the mayor and council shall pass all proper and necessary laws and ordinances for the control of slaves and free persons of color and to control, suppress, and abate all nuisances arriving from hogs, dogs, horses, and other animals strained at large in Valdosta. And do you not know that some white city councilmen didn't see nothing wrong with that? And do you not know that when I challenged it, some black folk were against me? But guess why I kept fighting? You all know why I kept fighting, don't you? Why do you all think I kept fighting? Because of St. John what? 832, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set and make you free. And so, thank you all so much. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> and you all don't have to clap, clap for me. I'll just take that as a standing ovation. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, this has been certainly an energetic and illuminating afternoon. And one of the best parts of it, I think, is the fact that I get the last word. <laughs> and the last word is to, to kind of build on what he said here. And then you go out and tell people what's going on. But to do that, you have to find out what's going on. There's a lot of going on in this town, there's a lot going on in this region that we don't know about. Amen. And we don't know about it because people aren't going out there and sitting in the boring meetings, they're not talking to people, they're, they're not investigating. One thing I want you to think back on, on your time at school here, everybody went through a science course. The scientific method says if you have a hypothesis, a theory about something, you try to determine whether or not it's true. Okay? And then if you come up with an answer, okay, what's the next step? Somebody else tries to replicate that. Somebody goes back and looks at what's, at what's happened. And they try to see if they get the same results. Mr. Ryan is out here. He's doing a lot of stuff that I, I guess you could say it's on the edge. It's on the edge.
but who is going behind him and following up? and helping to verify this. You know, if you're one voice in the wilderness, you're just that one vo voice, people will discount you. If you're a moral person, I think you have to look at situations and you say, I can't let that go. I need to have another look at that. If it's not true, let people know. If it is true, tell them. But, you know, the thing is, I think too many people today that don't want to know. They don't care. They, they, you know, they'd rather just have their easy lives and just go through life and, you know, I'm doing all I can do or I'm doing all I, can, I, I want to do. But if it's all you can do, then, you know, there's always, there's always money. Politicians pay that. But there's always some way you can help if you want to. Okay, thank you for letting me preach. We'll see you folks on uh, our uh, exam, exam day. The exam will not be a cumulative exam. It will be a debriefing. I'll ask you some questions about the class. I'll ask you about your participation in the class. Uh, it's not going to hurt you, but it is going to help me figure out some things, okay? What about the optional test? You can Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. The optional test, if you want to take the optional test, it will probably take about a half